Hey everyone, welcome to sandalschurch.tv where we're all about this vision of being real with ourselves, God, and others. And if you're really looking to dive deeper into these sermons each week, then you can go to debrief.show where Pastor Matt is giving real answers to tough questions. Thanks so much, guys. Enjoy the service. We're more free than ever to pursue our desires and create the life we've always dreamed of. But life is still full of hard choices. Were we ever supposed to figure this all out for ourselves? What do you really want? Live your truth. Chase your dreams. Is this okay? Follow your heart. Follow your heart. What do you really want? Live your truth. Do this for you. Chase your dreams. Chase your dreams. Do this for you. Do this for you. Isn't it your turn to be happy? Live your truth. Isn't it your Follow turn to your be heart. happy? Isn't it your turn to be okay? happy? Now what, what do you really now what? Does it even matter? Does it even matter? What will we choose? Welcome, welcome. Super glad you guys are here. Man, it's awesome, it's good to be here. You know, oftentimes when I encounter people who don't go to church, I invite them to church and I usually get something like this. I'm not religious or I don't believe in organized religion. And you know my joke, I say, well, Sandals isn't that organized, so come on over. Uh, the truth is we're getting organized and it has nothing to do with me, but all the amazing people that we've hired to actually organize this incredible thing called Sandals Church. But a lot of people don't feel like they're religious. And what they really mean is, I'm not a worshiper, I'm not into that. Okay, I wanna, I wanna mix it up a little bit. I liked my outline when I wrote it this last Wednesday, but I wanna change it up a little bit. And if you're a type one, it's gonna freak you out, but trust me, it's gonna be a great ride. So let's start on point two. Let's just do it. We're in charge. This is our church. We're gonna start on point two, all right. Never done this before. Point two, write this down. Everybody worships something. Everybody does. You might not know what it is, but you do. And a lot of times, I think we are dishonest with ourselves. We think we worship one thing, but really, we worship another thing. One of my favorite things to do is to watch stand-up comedy. Anybody a fan of stand-up comedy? Okay, you need, you need to get a life. Watch stand-up comedy, clean comedy, clean comedy. I want you to go to heaven, okay? So you need to watch it, and here's, here's the thing especially if you want to improve communication, if you want to improve speaking, and we all have to talk at our jobs. At some point in time, you have to move your mouth. Literally, stand-up comedians are, are some of the best uh, communicators on earth. Literally, they walk out with a microphone, and that's it. There's no special effects. There's no beautiful actors, actresses. There aren't superheroes. It's just a weird-looking dude or a weird-looking gal, and they just start talking, and you crack up. And so I was watching this stand-up uh, comedian, and it was a gal, and she came out and she, she said this. She said, in case you're wondering, I'm gay, which is hilarious because I was wondering. You can laugh at that. You don't have to be political. I was wondering. I was. She read my mind, not just a comedian, a mind reader. She said, in case you're wondering, she said, I'm gay. She said, but I got to be honest. She said, I love my LGBTQ community. I can't even keep up with all the letters, right? I love them. She said, but don't mess with my Chick-fil-A. <laughs> right? You can, you can laugh. That's funny. It's okay. It's funny. You're like, oh, I don't know. Huh, huh, everyone. Huh, huh, huh. And, and this is what she said. She said, listen, people. She said, I'm gay, but I'm fat first. <laughs> so she said, I'm fat first. She said, you better get that straight. Don't mess with my Chick-fil-A. Don't mess with it, right? And, and here's the thing is, at least she understands her priority. Some of us as Christians, you know, we love Chick-fil-A more than we love Jesus. Like some of you hate that it's closed on Sundays. You're like, why can they not dishonor the Lord? <laughs> why do they have to take God's commandment so seriously? Have you been paying attention to our series? <laughs> it's worked out for Chick-fil-A, right? Maybe the rest of the fast food could take a day off and they'd do better too, amen? Amen. Some of you would do better too because you're fat first. <laughs> I'm fat first, Jesus second. Look, every, everybody worships something. Everybody does. Everybody's a worshiper. Quit buying into it. The problem is what we've worshiped as a culture shifted. Some of you think it shifted yesterday, but it actually started shifting in the 1940s when our soldiers came home 
from literally defeating the greatest evil the world had ever seen. The world had never seen anything like Nazi Germany. The world had never seen anything like Imperial Japan. Both evil, both terrible. They came home, and there was a psychologist by the name of Spock, not this guy, an actual guy with the last name Spock, and he wrote a book about how to, to raise children. And he actually shifted the way Americans raise their kids. Now think about this, because when, because when the greatest generation of all time comes home, they raise the baby boomers, the most selfish generation of all time until mine, right? So they raise you, you raise me, and then we raise the millennials. Good luck, we love you. Okay. <laughs> so listen, here's what he said. We no longer need to raise children based upon what's right and wrong. We need to raise their self-esteem. In the 1940s, this guy sold 2 million copies of his book. And it changed forever the way we parent. One of the things that he did away with was discipline. Discipline was immoral, and it wrecked children's self-esteem. We quit directing children, and we built them up. Here's what happened subtly. We stopped worshiping God, and we started worshiping our children, and the world has never been the same. The world's never been the same. We've had more resources, more time, and our kids are more miserable. Every generation that worships themselves is worse off. Everybody worships something. And when we worship ourselves, we worship anything and everything but God. Anything and everything but God. Romans 1.21 says this. Yes, they knew God, but they would not worship him as God or even give him thanks. I actually got this question on the debrief. Why do we have to call God Father? It was after my sermon on honor your father and your mother. Isn't it amazing in our day and age when you get to choose your own pronoun, God doesn't get to choose his? Interesting, isn't it? Why does God get to choose that? Why can't I call him mother, holy mother? And my answer on the debrief was because God gets to pick what we call him. That's the answer. It says, yes, they knew God, but they wouldn't worship him as God or even give him thanks. Hint, that's what worship is. Thanks. Are your kids good at it? No, thanks Spock. Thanks Spock, he started it. And they began to think up foolish ideas of what God was like. It's not the one true God, it's something else. And they started to look at other things. And as a result, would you write this down? Parents, there are consequences for the way you raise your kids. Now, our world does not believe in consequences. We are terrified of consequences. But there are consequences. Whether you like them or not, whether you agree with them or not, you get to choose your choices in life, but you do not get to choose your consequences. As a result, their minds became dark and confused. What happens to kids? What happens to families? What happens to parents when they worship the wrong thing? They become dark and confused. So how do you know what you worship? How do you know, you know what you worship? I mean, many of us are really, really struggling. What do I worship? I don't know. I'm not sure what it is. I want you to, I'm gonna give you three clues as to what you might worship. First clue. I worship what dominates my thoughts. What do I spend all my time thinking about? Like right now, some of you are looking at me. I'm looking at you. I'm talking to you. You're not listening to a thing I'm saying. Some, your mind is somewhere else. Like if you're like me, you're really good at that. I can be listening to my wife and be on another planet. Right? What dominates your thoughts? My kids used to say this. Dad, are you listening or are you listening, listening? You ever get in trouble, dads? Well, dad said, oh, we could jump off a cliff. I wasn't really listening. I didn't, I didn't hear what they said. I worship what dominates my thoughts. This is why so many of us have anxiety and not peace. We, spending, we spend all of our time thinking about what could go wrong rather than who's in charge. I worship what dominates my thoughts. Next, this is key. What consumes my free time? What can't you wait to do? 
What can't you wait to do? I went to the, to the men's advanced breakfast and I saw this guy. I see him everywhere, at every campus, everywhere. We have nine campuses. I literally said, and this is embarrassing, we have so many employees at San Luis Church now. I'm like, do you work for me? Because I keep seeing you everywhere. They're supposed to send me a picture and an Enneagram profile of everybody who gets hired, but I don't remember seeing your picture. Do I pay you? This is what he told me. He said, no, man, I work for free. I was like, then I'm doubling your salary. <laughs> and you know what he said at our, our men's advance breakfast? He said, well, and I'm kind of a selfish person. He said, but I love this church. What, what is it that you can't wait to do? What is it that you're like, man, right? Your weekends. Next, what requires your money? What requires your money? My wife and I got in a little argument, a little tiff, a little spiritual discussion <laughs> about how much I spent on my snowboard versus how much we spent on her skis. You ever had one of those talks? It's gotta be fair. We gotta be equally stupid, amen? <laughs> and she thought that the amount that we spent on me was more than her, more than her. So I asked her a question, true story. I said, what did I get you for Christmas? She couldn't remember. <laughs> Pretty sure that's the devil, amen? <laughs> I was like, are you kidding me? You can't remember? She turned just bright red. And she started, she like said a card. It was terrible. <laughs> it wasn't a date night, it was date fight. Amen? <laughs> Woo! Bring it. What requires your money? You know what we worship? We'll spend all kinds of money. All kinds of money. Man, some of you guys, you, you cringe when that offering plate comes by at the end of service. But man, you'll drop 100 grand on an RV you drive twice. Twice. We should just stack up all the RVs that you guys don't use and have church in them. <laughs> we can have a wash party afterwards. That's how we worship. Ah. Right? What, do you, what, do, what requires your money? What's taking your money? And really, really start to ask these things because Jesus said you can't serve both God and money because in the end, you're gonna hate one and serve the other. Write this down. What I worship, what I worship will either save me or destroy me. You see, whatever you're worshiping, you're becoming. That's what you're gonna, you're gonna become. That's why the Bible says fix your eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. What I worship will either save me or it will destroy me. What is it that you're worshiping? Some of you, you don't even worship bad things. You worship good things like your kids. Look, kids are good until you worship them. Then they become the devil. And this is why some of you moms have no idea who you are after they're gone. I got good news for you. God never leaves. Your children will leave you. Your children will forsake you. God never does. God never does. Man, even marriage, as much love as we have there, one of the things that Tammy and I talk about, and I don't mean to be morbid, but the chances of us both dying at exactly the same time are just not realistic. One of us is gonna be left. And we have to remember that as much as we love each other, as much as we care about each other, if our hope is in our love, one of us ends up miserable and destroyed. Be careful what you worship. Some of you worship your jobs. And one day they downsized. Isn't, there, isn't it good news that there's no downsizing in heaven? Can you imagine if heaven, we had a layoff. We had to let some of the angels go. They should have followed Satan. They didn't, so we let them go. What I worship will save me or destroy me. What are you worshiping right now? What's dominating your thoughts? What consumes your free time? What requires your money? What is it that you bow down to every single day? Every single day. I got a friend of mine. He's gonna get Rams tickets. He was telling me how much a Rams seat costs. He told me how much. I was like, what? We should have done that for momentum. You want to sit in that seat for the next 50 years? $75,000. Our church would have gone, what? We get little sandals, jerseys. <laughs> Somebody gets saved. Touchdown! <laughs> you don't like my point? Throw a flag. <laughs> right? 
<laughs> it would work out pretty good. <laughs> These people, though, they're invested, man. They're invested. Now, I get most of them are at a much higher socioeconomic you know, bracket than we are. But what is it that you're all about? What is it that, what is it that the thing that you just, it consumes you? This week I hang out with my friend and he makes a lot more money than me. And he was bummed, he was sad. He, he was so sad, he was making me sad. You ever had a friend that's like that? You're just like, man, hey, how's it going? Oh, and then we're both miserable. And I was like, what's going on? This is what he said. Like I was waiting, my dog died, my, I'm having marriage problems. This is what he said. Somebody sent me a half a million dollars back. I said, what are you talking about? He said, yeah, I invested in this company and we're gonna make a bunch of money, but they decided they don't need my money and they made a ton of money without me. I said, so you're sad because you didn't what? He said, make millions of dollars. I said, me either. <laughs> How many of you didn't make millions this week? Raise your hands. <laughs> yeah, poor people. <laughs> I asked Tammy, I asked Tammy, I said, are you happy? She's like, yeah. We don't have a lot of stuff. We don't have a lot of money. We're happy. Can you imagine being depressed? Well, are you so sad? I didn't make 10 million. I could say that every day for the rest of my life. How's your day? I didn't make 10 million, how about you? <laughs> all right, now we're gonna go all the way back to the top. Today's message is how not to waste your life. You got one shot at this, you got one opportunity. This is the one life you get. Look, we're not Hindus, we're Hindus, Hindus. We're not Hindus, we don't think you get a second trip. You don't get to do it again. You got one shot, one shot. What are you gonna do with your life? Write this down, point number one. Only God can save me from worshiping the wrong thing. You see, the reason we worship other stuff is it's easy. It's easy. It's easy to get caught up. It's easy to get consumed. It's easy to get wrapped up and overly excited about something that doesn't matter. We're looking at the second commandment today, and next week we're gonna look at the first commandment, and then it's gonna be Easter. I'm super excited about where we're going, and I hope that you will, you'll come with me on this journey and you'll celebrate with me, because Easter happens so we don't have to be alone. God came to us. Exodus 20, verses four through six, it says, you must not make for yourself. Circle that word. If you consider yourself a spiritual person, the person most dangerous to your spiritual life is you. It's you. You must not make for yourself an idol of any kind. You're like, I don't have an idol. You know what happened to us this week? Our Wi-Fi went out. I, we, I don't have an idol. I'm a pastor of Sandals Church. I worship God every day. Our Wi-Fi went out. We're like, what are we gonna do now? <laughs> Can't talk to you guys. <laughs> I was on the phone with AT&T. They leave you and forsake you. <laughs> I was watching my phone, you ever done this? I, I, wish, I wish pastors could be this way. We will show up anywhere between the hours of 8 a.m. and 8 p.m. What? Can you imagine you're gonna have a funeral? Pastor Matt will be here anywhere between 8 a.m. and 8 p.m. Eat first. It's 6 p.m. I get a text message from AT&T. Sorry we missed you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I got anybody got the crazy feet. Woo! Woo and I can't, I can't, I cannot yell at people anymore on the phone because they're, they're always gonna know who I am. Seriously, one time I called March Air Force Base to yell about the jets at two in the morning and the colonel on the other end of the phone was like, Pastor Matt, and I was like, ah. <laughs> Wrong number. <laughs> they don't go to our church anymore. Um, so you gotta be really careful, but I, right? If you, if you waited all day, all day, all day for them to come fix your Wi-Fi and then they cancel your appointment because they missed you. And this is what they said. Well, they couldn't get in. I said, I'm in. They could have come in. I'm in. Lost my mind. <laughs> Tammy and I sat down last night, tried to, tried to watch Netflix. You ever try to watch Netflix when the internet goes out every two seconds? <laughs> and you're getting like, ah. Like, we can't even have date night. What is, what is this? It's ridiculous. We're gonna have to talk.
You must not make for yourself an idol of any kind. Right in there, AT&T must not make you an idol of any kind or any image of anything in the heavens or on earth in the sea. Right, the ancient world, you come into their house, they got a little idol, everybody sits around it, everybody eats around it, and you're like, I don't have an idol. You, people come to your house, everybody sits around the TV, everybody eats around the TV. Our boxes just talk. They used to just sit there. You must not bow down to them and worship, for I'm the Lord your God. Here's what God's saying. It's really easy to get wrapped up in the wrong thing. Listen to me, good people, good people. Some of you are like, oh, I don't need to invite my neighbors to church. They're good people. Yeah, compared to you. <laughs> but we don't stand before you on judgment day. If we do, I wanna be in your line, amen? I'm, no, I'm going with Fred. I'm gonna get in Fred's line, compare my life to his. I think I'm good. No, Jesus' line, oh, bummer. Right? He died for the sins of the world. I struggle loving my family. <laughs> you must not bow down to them or worship them, for I'm the Lord your God. I'm a jealous God. Some of us have a problem with that. Let me tell you the difference, a subtle difference between jealousy and envy, and it's really hard to translate in the Hebrew. Here's the difference. Envy is the desire for what's not mine. Jealousy is a passion for what is. You see, envy, guys, is when I'm checking out your wife and I want your wife. Jealousy is when some dude's looking at my wife and I'm like, oh, no. We're gonna go Old Testament in this place. We're gonna lay on hands on you, right? You see, God is jealous because you're his. You're his. You're his because he made you. Listen to me, if you're a Christian, you're double his. He made you and he sent his son on the cross to die for you. Can you imagine, can you imagine parents? Raise your hand if you're a parent. Your kids came home and said, I don't believe in you. I don't believe in you. Well, who do you believe in? The neighbors. <laughs> I think they made me. I'm gonna go worship them. I'm gonna go mow their lawn. I'm gonna go do their dishes. I'm gonna go help that dad. Well, why? I don't think you're real. How many parents are gonna have a word, amen? Send your prophets and your angels, maybe a flood, right? You feeling God? You feeling God. You are. What do you mean I'm not real? What, what, what if your kids are like, I'm not worshiping you, I'm worshiping the dog. I'm gonna worship a cat. That's what the Egyptians did, they put a cat up there. Oh, we made it big, it's a sphinx. Right? It's, whoa, that's a giant cat. I'm gonna worship the, I'm gonna worship creation. Man, the other night I almost killed my dog. I'm not proud of it. Pray for me, pray for me. We have a possum problem. Now, if you don't know this, possum's defense mechanism is when they're noticed, they do this. So it creates a Mexican standoff in my backyard. My dog is, I see you. And the possum's like, no, you don't. My dog's like, I see you. Like, no, you don't. And it will go for hours. Do you know why? Dogs are dumb. So I go out in the backyard, throwing rocks at the possum. Go, go. And I lost my mind. I threw a rock at my dog. It was, it was a low moment. We went to couples therapy, worked it out. But... But people worship the creation. Oh, I'm gonna worship an elephant. I'm gonna worship, right, the, the orcas. I'm gonna, okay, they're, they're awesome. Not as awesome as you. You just downgraded your worship. Can you imagine your kids? I'm gonna worship our hamster. It's a holy hamster. You must not bow down to them or worship them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God. I will not tolerate your affection towards other gods. Ladies, you like it when your husband's eyes wander? God doesn't either. He says, for I lay the sins of parents upon their children. The entire family is affected. Listen to me. You screw this up, you screw your kids up. Do you understand that? If your boat becomes a priority, if Lake Havasu becomes a priority, if skiing becomes a priority, guess what your kids worship? 
the God you placed in front of them. I lay the sins of the parents upon their children. An entire family is affected. Even the children of the third and fourth generation of those who reject me. You make a decision, oh, I'm too busy for church. Man, you're gonna screw up kids you'll never even meet. But listen to what God says. But I lavish unfailing love for a thousand generations on those who love me and obey my commands. Look, you screw it up, you screw it up for a couple generations. You get it right and you change your family history forever. I got introduced to an employee this week, never met him before. He got hired and I heard his story. You know, he was invited to Sandals Church into our kids ministry, he was 10 years old. A neighbor invited him, a friend brought him to church, a 10 year old boy came to church. He liked Sandals Church, he liked the kids ministry, so he brought his sister. The brother and the sister got saved. They kept coming to church, kept coming to church. They both liked it. The older brother started coming. He liked it. He gave his life to Jesus. Pretty soon the mom says, man, I wanna be involved. A couple years later, the mom starts coming to church and the mom gave her life to Jesus. And a couple years later, guys, we're a little slow. The dad said, man, I'm missing out. He started coming to Sandals, got involved. He gave his life to Jesus. We just hired that 10-year-old boy who just graduated from college and wants to work at Sandals Church because Jesus changes lives, lives. Because somebody invited him. Do you know why that's personal to me? My last name is Brown, that's half of who I am. My grandfather was not raised in church. But when he was a little boy, somebody invited him to church. And he didn't have clothes nice enough for church to you. So you know what somebody did? They bought him clothes for church. At the age of 90 years old, with a smile on his face, he told me about his first church ever, where he was taken to church, he had new clothes, a new Bible, and afterwards he had a hamburger and a milkshake. He's 90 years old. 90 years old, somebody invited him to church, changed his life forever. Because of that, my grandma got saved. Because of that, their children were saved. Because of that, my dad went to a Baptist college and met his wife, and they both were saved. And my brother and I were raised in a Christian home because some dude invited somebody to church, bought a pair of Levi's, a nice shirt, new shoes, a burger, and an ice cream. I never met that guy, but I'm gonna hug him in heaven. I'm gonna hug him in heaven. I lavish, I lavish, God says. God says, I wanna lavish you. I wanna lavish you. I wanna bless you. For a thousand generations, on those who love me and obey my commands. But you gotta worship him. You gotta turn away from idols. You gotta reject what everyone else is worshiping and you gotta hold fast. So why do we worship the wrong thing? Let's go down to point number three. Why do we worship the wrong thing? Here's the answer. Some of us don't know any better. You weren't raised in church. I, I meet people all the time that never think about God, never think about church, great people, great life, never ever thought about God. You just don't know any better. You don't miss what you don't know. You just don't know any better. This is what the Bible says, Acts 17, 29 through 31. We shouldn't think of God as an idol designed by craftsmen from gold or silver or stone. Do you know what the early Christians were con condemned to death by the Romans as? Atheists. Did you know that? Atheists. Because when they went where they were worshiping, did you know there was no cross? There was no statue? There was nothing. The Romans didn't get it. They had this love feast, and then they ate Jesus. They didn't understand it. You can laugh at that, it's funny. It's called the Lord's Supper. We just did it. We shouldn't think of God as an idol designed by craftsmen from gold, silver, or stone. God overlooked people's ignorance about these things. Here's the key point, in earlier times. But now he commands everyone everywhere to repent of their sins and turn to him. 
It doesn't matter where you grew up, Christian, Catholic, Baptist, Sandals, Hindu, atheist, or Wicca. It doesn't matter. God is commanding you. The one who made you, the one who designed you says, listen, I let you go your way for a time, but now it's time to repent of your sins and turn to me. Why? Because he set a day for judging the world with justice. Man, it drives me crazy every time I hear a politician or a judge or a prosecutor talk about justice. There is no justice in this life. But God will bring about justice. And a lot of these people crying for it are gonna be terrified of it on the day of justice. Because God doesn't just deal with your enemy on that day. He deals with you. He deals with me. He set a day for judging the world with justice by the man he has appointed. Did you know that even Muslims believe Jesus runs judgment day? He proved to everyone who this is by raising him from the dead. Like some of you are going to be like, I, I didn't know who it was. God's like, really? What do I got to do for you? He was dead, right? Yeah, I know. And he rose. Yeah, could happen every day. No. Fairly substantial piece of evidence. Some of us, though, I think there's, the reasons are far more sinister. We've grown impatient with God. Some of us are like spoiled children. Are we there yet? Are we there yet? When are we going to get there? Are we there? Are we there? Are we there? Are we there? Like every parent has almost murdered a child the 70,000th time you are asked, are we there yet? My kids ask so many times they forget who I am. Are we there yet? Dad, dad, mom, mom, dad, 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 mom, mom. They don't even know who I am. We've grown impatient with God. So in your Bibles, we get the Ten Commandments in Exodus 20. This is 12 chapters later. 12 chapters later. Like next week. We get the law. We get the Ten Commandments. Here's why you need God, because you're going to waste your life. Don't worship anything else. They're false gods. They're not real gods. There's only one God. Twelve chapters later, Moses goes up to the mountain. Do you know what he's going to go get? The hand-signed copy from God. He's going to go, he's going to go get the commandments written by God. It's the original manuscript. When the people saw how long, underline it, how long it was taking Moses to come back down from the mountain. God, I wanted to marry a Christian man, but oh, it's taken a little long. Right? God, I wanted to wait to have sex till I got married, Lord, but I'm gonna die. I'm 19. <laughs> right? They gathered around Aaron. Come on, they said. Make us some gods who can lead us. I want you to circle Aaron's name and write in there, holy man. Even a holy man can get holy stupid if he's surrounded by the wrong people. Aaron is literally the second holiest man, third most important person in all of Israel. You got Moses, Joshua, and Aaron. They said, come on, they said. Make us some gods who can lead us. We don't know what happened to Moses. They're like, Moses, Moses, who's that guy? We don't know what happened to him. And by the way, here's what we do know. He brought us here from the land of Egypt. He left us here to die. So Aaron said, take the gold rings from your ears of your wives and your sons and your fathers. I want you to write in your notes. Here's what the Hebrew actually says. It says, snatch them out of their ears. And here's what I want you to understand. One of the ways you can tell the difference between the real God and a false God is the false God steals your wealth. The true God will only receive it if you give it. Look, we take an offering at the end of every service. We don't come and pull your earrings off. That's what a false God will do, right? Listen to me, some of you battle addiction. It's because you've worshiped a false God and that false God will bankrupt you in its name. Right? I don't care if you can't pay the mortgage. You need a high. Boom. I don't care if you haven't paid the light bill. You, you, you've got to have sex with a prostitute. Boom. Pulls the earrings right off your ear. Doesn't care if it bleeds or how it hurts. That's what a false God does. 
All the people took their gold rings from their ears and brought them to Aaron. And then Aaron took the gold, melted it down, and molded it into the shape of a calf. When the people saw it, they exclaimed, Oh, Israel, these gods who brought you out of the land of Egypt, they start lying to themselves. This is where we came from. This is the God who saved us. This is the God who rescued us. This is the God who parted the Red Sea. This is the God who brought down 10 curses on Pharaoh and the land of Egypt. Isn't it amazing how we can all believe a lie if we all just say it out loud? Aaron saw how excited the people were, so he built an altar in front of the calf. Then he announced, tomorrow there will be a festival to the Lord. The people got up early the next morning to sacrifice burnt offerings and peace offerings, and after this, they celebrated with feasting and drinking, and they indulged in pagan revelry. They had a big sex party in the name of God. Listen to me, the one true God has always asked us to do three things very differently from everybody else. We work differently. Six days you shall work. One day is for the Lord and for fellowship. We eat differently. The Jews didn't eat like everybody else. Christians could not eat food sacrificed to idols. If God doesn't have your stomach, he doesn't have you. And the way we have sex. There are so many churches today that will sell your soul to gain a favorable opinion from you. I will not do that. I would rather you hate me and go to heaven than you love me and go to hell. Three things the Lord says we can't do. They violate all three of those things. They create their own festival. They worship on a different day. They have sex with whoever they want and they feast and they dedicate it to a false God. Next, some of us though, we don't worship God because we're angry with God. We're angry with God. You're disappointed with God. You're mad at God. So you've created your own God. You've created your own idol. You've decided to worship something else. Exodus 32 When they came near the camp, Moses saw the calf and the dancing, underline this, and he burned with anger. And some of you are gonna catch this. You're gonna say, but the Lord didn't do anything. Oh, exactly. And that's why we get mad at God. The Lord didn't do what I wanted him to do. Oftentimes, our anger at God is for one of two reasons. God didn't answer our prayer the way we wanted, or we got hurt because of something someone else did. Both of those things happen here. When they came near the camp, Moses saw the calf and the dancing, and he burned with anger, and he threw the stone tablets on the ground. Do you know what he just threw away? The Ten Commandments. He got angry. And he wrecked the very word of God that was given to him. That's what anger does. Anger wants to destroy your relationship with God. He took the calf they made and he burned it and he ground it into powder and he threw it in the water and he forced the people to drink it. Wow, that's a rant. He's pretty upset. Some of your wives think you get angry and say, let's study Moses. (laughs) Feel better about yourself. He lost it. Look, in my mid-30s, I was so angry with God. Do you know why? Because I was wrong about God. You see, here's what I believed. I believed that if God is good and God is love, he'll give me what I want. But here's the thing. Whenever you're focused on what you want, and not what God wants, you're gonna be just like Moses, and you're gonna shatter his commandments. That's what I did. I'll never forget the day where I came to the Lord in prayer, and I said, Lord, I'm so sorry. Who am I to yell at you? Who am I? You see, in the 1940s, a guy by the name of Spock taught us to be self-centered rather than God-centered, and we've been angry ever since. 
That's what happens when we worship false gods. Lastly, I think we follow people instead of God. Some of you come to church because I was gonna say you, th you think I'm funny, but let's just be honest. I'm a little funny. <laughs> I tell my wife that all the time. Just say it, just say it. Just say it, I'm hilarious. <laughs> Listen, I want you to have a good time at church. I don't think church should be boring. I don't think God's boring. But I don't want you to come to church because of me. I want you to come to church because of God. You see, guess what happened to the people of Israel? Moses, their favorite preacher, left. We got stuck with Aaron. What good's he? Right? And the next thing you know, they completely throw their relationship with God away. So Moses confronts. This has got to be one of the greatest passages in the Old Testament, the Hebrew Bible. He confronts Aaron. Aaron says, don't get so upset, man. Chill out. Chill out, my Lord, Aaron replied. He says this. You know how evil these people are. Can you imagine I go on a mission trip? I come back. Pastor Dan Zabardi leads you guys all to, to worship Buddha. I'm like, what happened? And Dan's like, you know the people at Sandals Church. They demanded a, a, an idol, and so I made one. Like, I was gone two weeks. And Dan's like, have you met Sandals people? Don't get so upset. Chill out, Aaron says. You know yourself how evil these people are. They said to me, this is hilarious, make us gods who will lead us. And we don't know what happened to this fellow Moses who brought us here from the land of Egypt. This is what's happening today. Some people think Jesus has been gone too long. He's not coming back. You're going to be surprised. So I told him, whoever has gold jewelry, take it off. Is that what happened? And when they brought it to me, I simply threw it in the fire and out came this calf. Oh, man. Does human self-deception have any bounds? Like Aaron's like, I don't know what happened. You were gone. It was confusing. I started crying. We got this golden calf. We had a party. Listen, Jesus never called you to follow a person. Jesus said to his disciples, look, you get to decide whether or not you're a disciple. So this may or may not apply to you. Jesus said to his disciples, if any of you wants to be my follower, you must give up your own way. Oh, but my desires. Oh, my sexuality. Oh, my passions. Oh, my idols. Right? Oh, my idols. Oh, my Chick-fil-A. You must give up on your own way, take up your cross, and what? Follow me. If you don't follow Jesus, you've wasted your life because Jesus is the way, he is the truth, and he is the life. And no one goes to God but by him. This is the gospel. This is God's spirit, and God who sits in heaven is calling you to follow his son to freedom, to being a son, to being a daughter, to no longer worshiping things that can't hear you, that don't answer you, or God forbid, you're worshiping a demon and they hate you. That's what the Bible says idols are. They are one of two things, not real or demonic. And we say stupid things like, well, all religions lead to the same place. That's the dumbest thing anybody ever said. They're not even talking about the same God. My prayer is you would not waste your life and you would follow Jesus. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I pray that we would be convicted to throw away our idols, to dispatch of them. Lord, some of us, like me, care more about our router, our internet Wi-Fi than we care about you. Some of us are more passionate about our sports team, our hobbies, than we are about you. God, there's nothing wrong with enjoying life, but God, there's everything wrong if those things take your place. 
God, right now, some of us who are Christians need to reorganize our life and you need to be number one again and everything else needs to be a distant second. And Lord, for some of us, we don't know you and we need to figure out how to follow Jesus today. So Heavenly Father, I pray your Holy Spirit would lead us all to make whatever decision you've called us to make. We pray in Jesus' name, amen.